It was a day loaded with love. Katie learned that making something special for someone else really felt good inside. Orby found out that a card that says, I love you, makes people smile. And they both discovered that making hearts out of paper is easier when you fold the paper in half. It was Valentine's Day and sensational right from the start. Dad made heart-shaped pancakes for breakfast. On their placemats, Katie and Orby found heart-shaped boxes of candy and some red flowers. And Mom and Dad found decorated cards from Katie and Orby. Everyone smooched their thank yous. Chance wore a red ribbon and walked proudly through the kitchen to show it off. Valentine's Day was Valentine card delivery day. After breakfast, Katie and Orby put on their mailman hats and stuck big paper hearts in the hat band and bundled up for the wintry day and went off to ring doorbells. Of course, the first doorbell they rang was Yi Ping's. She opened the door with a big smile, and Katie and Orby each handed her a card. She gave them both a card, too, and then she threw on her snowsuit to join them on their deliveries. After all, she had to give out her cards, too. Next, they went to Mrs. Perrette's. She was delighted to find her Valentine cards brought directly to her house. And she presented each friend with a beautiful heart-shaped cookie she had baked herself. Munching, they stomped through the snow to Andy's in a frosty cloud of um yum yums and yum yum yums. And at the door, Andy stood waiting for them. He loved Yi Ping, Katie, and Orby's cards and placed them on the hall table. Katie and Orby and Yi Ping loved the ones he gave them. Soon, four friends trudged through the snow to Tom's house. Tom pretended no one lived there by that name, and after fits of giggles, they finally got to give him their cards. Miguel's house was next, and he wanted to join the delivery team, too. And soon, a stream of friends trailed down the sidewalk, stopping, delivering, and moving on. When they all got back to Katie's, everybody was happy. Mom filled mugs with hot chocolate and sent them upstairs to play when they were done. Just as they charged past the door, the doorbell rang. Orby wondered who they'd forgotten. He opened the door. But it wasn't a young friend. It was the real mailman. He gave the mail to Orby, but held one envelope back. Then he told Orby that one was for him. The letter had a heart on the corner of it. The mailman winked and told him somebody loved him. Orby burbled, was there one for Katie? The mailman checked his back. There was nothing, and Orby was very surprised. Orby turned to his friends, who were really anxious to see who had sent the letter. Orby looked at Katie, who, strangely enough, smiled broadly. <laughs> Orby ripped open the envelope. As Mom and Dad came into the hallway, he pulled out a magnificent handmade card. One big red heart sprang out at him. When he opened it up to see who it was from, there was no name at all, only a squiggly line and a dot. Orby didn't understand. He showed it to Mom. It seemed like a really weird way to write your name. Mom giggled and told Orby it was from a secret admirer, that this was a question mark. The person who sent it wanted him to know that he was loved, but wanted him to guess who they were. Now, how on earth would he ever be able to do that? Well, Dad told him that he'd have to figure it out. Well, Orby scanned the sea of friends' faces. Each looked as curious as he was, and Orby was perplexed. Orby looked at the squiggle again and spun around, and he zipped up the stairs. In a second, he was back with two pads of paper and two pencils, and his friends noticed he had his detective hat on. Orby tooted that he, Detective Orby, was going to solve the mystery. He wanted each friend to draw a question mark on the pad. He gave Katie one pad and a pencil, and he took the other. He and Katie held the pads as everyone else drew squiggly lines with dots. Now, I have to tell you, it's a great deal of giggling and <laughs> a whole lot of trying, but most of the friends had never drawn a question mark before, and so not one looked like the one on the card. 
Orby scratched his head. Katie shook her. There was no match. As the friends went upstairs to build the biggest heart-shaped block fort ever, Orby slipped on his jacket, and with Mom in tow, he went out to see Mrs. Perrette. And at the door, he asked her to draw the squiggle, and she did. But it wasn't the same. Orby knocked on Tom's door. He drew one, too, but it wasn't the same either. He went across the street and tried everywhere he knew. Who would leave Katie out? Orby thought and thought about that, but no one came to mind. Soon it was dinner time, and Orby was completely at a loss. He had no luck. Nobody knew who sent the card, and nobody made a question mark like the one inside. Orby nerbled into his dinner that he really didn't care anyway. Whoever sent it was a little rude. And I have to tell you that that surprised Katie. But Orby continued. They should have sent one to his best friend in the whole world. Leaving her out was mean. Katie leaned across the table and smiled her biggest, broadest smile. Orby was just about to go on when he noticed something a little odd about it. Odd because it wasn't just a happy smile. It was a look-at-me smile, and all of a sudden, Orby leapt out of his chair. He spun and climbed right up the wall, across the ceiling, over the table, and down the other side. He was ecstatic. He had finally figured it out. (laughs) Orby tooted that it was Katie. Katie was his secret admirer. He grabbed her up in the biggest hug and swung her around the room as she squealed in delight. (laughs) And when he put her down, she kissed his pink cheek and she told him the only thing that wasn't a secret was that she loved him very much. And you know, that's true. Everybody knew Katie loved Orby. And of course, he loved her too. Maybe next Valentine's Day, you can send a love letter to somebody special in your life. And if you do, I just happen to know they will love it.